y'all get quiet quick. If I sit back down, will y'all start talking again? Hey, good morning. Good to see y'all. How's everybody this morning? Great. That's what I heard, so I'm going to stick with that. Uh, a couple announcements before we get going. I will let you know today's Youth Sunday. It's amazing. Uh, so thank you for being here. Our youth will lead um, every aspect of music except the organ because for whatever reason, Mitch didn't find time to teach somebody to play it. So maybe next year, Mitch. Maybe next year. Uh, we want to thank, we had a crew come out yesterday and organize our kitchen, and we just want to give them our thanks. If you've ever organized your kitchen at your house, it's terrible. If you organize a public kitchen, it's terribler. That's not good English, but it's true. So uh, if you see somebody who you think might have done that or find a name, please thank them. Um, one of the bonuses from that is um, afterwards, which I'll make an announcement, we're going to have a, a, a really legit hospitality hour that our college students are putting on. Thank you, college folk. Um, and there's tables on that corner of stuff that they don't want. So if you've been thinking, you know what, my kitchen is actually a little empty. I could deal with about 63 punch cups. Today you're in luck. Uh, we'll even help walk them to your car. Um, so thanks. All, so as a result of that, please do, if you have time, to stay after um, because we really do have a really great, so heavy hors d'oeuvres, ice cream bar, probably some stuff that I'm missing, but you will find out if you take the time to go in there. Teaser. That's what I did. Um, also just want to make sure y'all are aware on Friday, February 9th, that sounds right. Is that right? I have a card right here. I should read it. Friday, February 9th, um, Alicia Failer, she's a Christian counselor in the area, will be coming to speak to our church um, with a focus in parts on how COVID has affected our kids of all ages, as well as how, um, as Christian parents, one of the things that we probably should do a better job of, my words, not her, is allow our kids to fail and allow them to see that through failure, God actually brings redemption and healing and does some amazing things. So uh, if you'd like to come to that, we would love to have you. I got an email this week from one of our members. Um, it is open to anybody who works, has relationships with, has personally kids or grandkids. Um, and I would even say, if you don't, um, my guess is based on our conversation that we had with her, she's going to hit on some things that us adults probably need to do a little better at too. So we would love to have you. It's Friday, February 9th. Dinner starts at 630. The event starts at 7, ends at 9 p.m. Um, dinner and dessert will be provided. That is to help those of you who have little ones and need to pay for child care to be able to do that. Um, if you have any questions, see me about it. It's something our young adult ministry is putting on, and uh, we would love to have you RSVP to come by Friday or Sunday, February 4th. Um, that being said, thank you all for being here today. Let's move forward with worship. Romans 13 instructs us to share with God's people who are in need and practice hospitality. These are things our church does well and has a chance to focus on over the next couple of weeks. Two weeks from today is the football Super Bowl, and on the same day following this service, our church will have our Super Bowl of Caring. The Super Bowl of Caring allows us to unite with other faith-based communities, schools, community organizations, and compassionate individuals in the fight against hunger by collecting canned goods and monetary donations. So between now and Sunday, February 11th, help us fill the large donation bins around the church, pray about what you would like to give, and join us after the church service as we share a meal of soup and collect money in soup pots. And know that what is collected stays in our community to help fight hunger as all of our collection will go to benefit Gainesville Community Ministry, which is just south of the church. So volunteer and bring a crock pot of soup to share or join with us for lunch on the 11th so together we can help others taste and see that the Lord is good.
please stand for our call to worship. The righteous gives good advice to friends. A friend loves at all times. Some friends play at friendship. We cannot come before God unless we're first honest with ourselves about who we are, about the mistakes we make, and about how well or poorly we care for others. In this spirit, let us offer our prayers to God. Join us in our com corporate prayer followed by a time of silent personal reflection. Lord, you come to us, but we do not recognize you. You call but we do not follow. You command, but we do not obey. You lift us, but we do not thank you. Lord, you accept us, but we do not accept others. You forgive us, but we do not forgive those who wrong us. You love us, but we do not love our neighbor. Lord, Show us how to carry our mission, not our own, so that we, like you, see the outcast, the needy, and the poor. May we, like you, give up our comfortable lives so we can help others. Now, O oh Lord, transform us as we continue our confession of silence.
Hear these comforting words. If you repent and believe in God's redeeming mercy, your sins are forgiven. Trust in God's promises and begin anew your life with God and all people. In the name of Jesus Christ. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ. Today's Gospel reading is John 15, 14 through 17, which can be found on New Testament, page 109. And now, let us prepare our hearts for the reading of God's Word with the prayer of, for illumination. Guide us, O God, by your Word and by the Holy Spirit. Help us to listen for your commands and follow your paths with our families, friends, church, and community as you have chosen us to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. John, chapter 15, verses 14 through 17, New Testament, page 109. Please hear the word of the Lord. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer, because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends, because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my Father. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. This is the word of the Lord.
At this time, children are invited to the front steps for a time for young disciples. Afterward, children in kindergarten through second grade will be dismissed to Kids for God. All others may return to sit with their families. Do you guys like playing with Legos? How about building blocks? How about sand castles at the beach? Have you ever knocked any of these down or broken them? Or maybe you acted like a giant and pushed the blocks down or destroyed the sand castles with your feet. You know, sometimes I have felt just like those Legos building blocks, and sandcastles, a little broken, hurt, and knocked down. But I also know I have been built up at these times by others who have helped me out or said something kind to me and been my friend. How about we make a deal to be kind people around others, even more to those who are hurt? We can be helpers that are kind, say kind words, and work to be known as a friend. Will you join me in prayer? Congregation, please join us. Dear God, please help us to build each other up and do this with everyone. Thank you for loving us and for teaching us how to love others. Guide us in everything we do. In Jesus' name, amen. Today's New Testament reading is 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 11 through 19, which can be found on New Testament page 205. Please hear the word of the Lord. 
Therefore, encourage one another and build up each other, as indeed you are doing. But we appeal to you, brothers and sisters, to respect those who labor among you and have charge of you in the Lord and admonish you. Esteem them very highly in love because of their work. Be at peace among yourselves. And we urge you, beloved, to admonish the idlers, encourage the faint-hearted, help the weak, be patient with all of them. See that none of you repays evil for evil, but always seek to do good to one another and to all. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Jesus Christ for you. Do not quench the spirit. This is the word of the Lord. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Kaylee Bleeker. I am 17 years old, and I'm a senior at Gainesville High School. My parents are Troy and Tammy Bleeker. Some of you might know them. And I've been going to this church for 17 years, since 2007. In that time, I've made a lot of relationships. From growing up within the church, this includes preschool teachers and children, choir directors, pastors, youth leaders, and not to mention many of you sitting in this pews today. And these are just relationships through First Pres. It doesn't even count all of the ones I've made outside of church. So today we are looking at relationships like these, both how, both how others influence us and how we influence others. We will be looking at what the Bible says regarding how we influence others, and later Breezy will teach us to understand what the Bible says about how these relationships have an influence on our lives. To be honest, sometimes I wonder how, or even if, I've influenced others the way that they have influenced me. But before I even think if I've been influential, I wonder even can I be influential? After all, I am only one person and a high school student at that. Yet I remember that one person can be influential and that you, and that you do not have to be someone of older age. This is shown within the Bible as it reminds us of people like Moses, the Apostle Paul, or the young shepherd David who defeated Goliath. Another thing I've also learned is that you do not have to be famous to be influential. Influence is not fame. Someone can be famous, but not influential. Because real influence creates change in the heart as it impacts behaviors, perceptions, and values. So let me say that again. Real influence creates change in the heart as it impacts behaviors, perceptions, and values. So if we know and understand that influence can come from one person, that that person can be young or old, and that that person does not need to be famous, what does that mean? It means that both you and I can have impact and be influential in any one of our relationships. Because real influence creates change in the heart as it impacts behaviors, perceptions, and values. This kind of influence won't come through modern day apps like Instagram or Facebook. It comes through the relationships around you, the people surrounding you, or perhaps even the person right in front of you. After all, the kind of influence that the Bible says we should have starts with the people before the platform. So if we flash back to the Old Testament, in the beginning, God created influence. You know the story, God made man, then made woman from man, then he allowed the potential for humans to influence for both ways of good or for evil. And if we take a look at the New Testament, even from his humble beginnings, Jesus, though not born through wealth or through fame, was the ultimate example of a man of influence. He simply did things differently. Unlike most teachers in his day, the calling of his disciples was based around him choosing them. He called them just as he calls us. He appointed them the task of being emissaries of Christ, to bear fruit and to be his witnesses of influence. So, how do I influence? One thing to know is to start with the small. You have no idea what one word of encouragement 
one effort, one action, can do to someone who needs just a small touch of God in their lives. God says to come as you are. You don't need to be someone of accomplishments or have a whole picture for the future. Yet you do have to know him and make an effort to be like him. As a Christian, the best thing to do within your everyday relationships and in response to his love is to choose to be his love. You can do this by representing the love of Jesus to others. You can love them for who they are and let them know that they are more than enough. You can help them see and know God's presence in their lives. And you can help them remember that the ultimate influence is influencing someone, not only by who you are, but whose you are. For example, as a child, you are subject to early influence. When you don't yet know what lies ahead of you, but you trust them, you're trusting in your parents, you follow in their footsteps until you can make your own decisions. And as such, when a mother loves her child, she creates a context in which that child is free to love her in return. And this is the most influential part of your life, that time when you are most shaped by what makes you who you will become. Because you see, from our very early days, God created us to be more human, not less. And therefore, he gives us that choice to influence for, for good or for evil. As a result of God's grace, through Jesus, we must carry his influence into our world through acts of love. Fortunately, he guides us as his disciples to bear fruit. Or within friendships, it's a chosen influence. It's one who loves at all times in all kinds of weather, a line some of you might recognize. Friends move towards the pain and hardship out of love, not away in selfish fear. We need to trust that just as they are born into our lives, we were born into theirs. In the verses that Parker read from the Gospel of John, the word translated friend is from the Greek verb philio, which means to love. So when we read friend in this passage, Jesus is literally saying those who are loved. Furthermore, the context of this passage starts with Jesus saying, you are my friends. And by saying this, he emphasizes a friendship totally built upon, in, and around the love of Jesus. When we take a look at our relationships, we can look to Jesus as our greatest example of this. Keeping nothing back, he opens himself up to us. He made himself known, which in its very nature is a relationship of love. His command to love each other is the ultimate characteristic of the Christian life, and he led by example. The ultimate demonstration of Jesus' love is no one, said Jesus, has love greater than this, to lay down your life for each other. And that's a value that he personally embodied. And while there can be negative relationships, and it's just as easy to say, just don't befriend these people or lead the situation, what if there's a greater purpose? What if we keep entering into their lives as a friend of faith? What if we love them unconditionally? And what if we are the one to help them see that they are more than enough? And what if we get to be the one that Jesus uses to guide them to the light and help them find their way on the path to which God calls them? And what if we say, show, and treat them in such a way that they know you are my friends, just as Jesus did? Jesus calls his disciples to bear fruit. And as we continue reading from John 15, verses 14 to 17, we realize John wants the reader to open up to the knowledge of God. For John knows that the more the one is in relationship with him, and the more one truly serves him, and the more one truly knows him, the more fruitful they should be for him. So when it comes to our relationships, may we go forth in influence. We must understand that fruit bearing is not a test. It does not mean you need to come forth unto him if you accomplish something great, or that it will make you safe from destruction. Fruit bearing is the byproduct. Because the Bible states, apart from me, you can do nothing. Our fruitfulness is Jesus working within you. So ultimately, this tie of how we are friends of Jesus is tied to how we bear his good fruit. Because the fruit we bear through him will last a lifetime. And through our relationships, we have the opportunity to love somebody as Jesus loved us. So back to the question I first asked, do you, like me, wonder if you can be influential? If you ever ask yourself how 
or even if I can have a significant influence, start with a prayer, including asking the Lord to help you to find your purpose, passion, or how to be an instrument for God's work. You don't need to come unto him with accomplishments, just come to him as you are. Lead a righteous life, be who God created you to be, whether it's a great friend, sister, mother, father, grandparent, even from humble beginnings and without fame, you can be influential and have influence. So let us take our relationships to Christ in prayer so that we can carry his influence in our everyday relationships. And while it might be hard to see the larger purpose behind this influence, I have no doubt that God is working within each and every one of you. So initiate, reach out a hand, and remember that even in the smallest acts, you never know how you can influence someone or the impact that they might have on you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Wicker. She moved the step because she needs it and I don't. <laughs> Good morning. My name is Breezy Dowling. I'm 18 years old. I'm a senior at Buholtz High School. My brother is Oliver, and my parents are Margaret and Greg Dowling. I've been going to this church for 15 years since 2009. I had the privilege of preaching last Sunday at Youth Sunday with Kaylee, and I'm really pumped to be back. Like me, I'm sure most of you have heard the expression, you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. And while I don't know if this is actually true, I believe the motivation behind saying this phrase is extremely important. We should all be aware of who is in our lives and their effect on us as individuals. Growing up, I heard this phrase in reference to who I made friends with, and recently I've been thinking about it more. Because being perfectly honest, I think we can all look at our lives and identify people who we shouldn't have allowed to influence us in the ways that they did. Yet because they did, these people may have led us to make poor choices, talk bad about others, put others down, gave them permission to prevent us from growing, or cause negative relationships with others or those in ourselves. I'm not going to go on and on about just avoiding mean or rude people, but instead I want to explore the idea of influence in a more positive manner. In the passage from 1 Thessalonians, read by Emmy, we are being told by Paul, the author of Thessalonians, to have high regard for those in our lives who demonstrate hard work, even when they admonish you. Admonish, the word admonish comes from the Greek word with the meaning of advising someone concerning the dangerous consequences of an action. In other words, it's to give warning, concern, or to call somebody out with the intention of their improvement or helping them be more in accordance with God's will. It is to be so caring, attentive, and considerate to another brother or sister in Christ that you are willing to look out for their needs and, if necessary, be willing to actively help them face hard truths. Connecting back to the idea of friendship, true friends will tell you the truth. They will tell you when you mess up. That kind of bond, that kind of trust, forces us to want to be better and improve our actions. Now, I would like everyone to take a second and think of your best friend. It could be many, one of many best friends that you have, maybe one from when you were a kid, maybe it's a parent or a sibling. Just make sure there's someone extremely important to you. Do you have their name in your head? Yes, okay. I'm sure a lot of us think about traits or memories like trust, love, a shared experience, happiness, excitement, when we try and determine why this person is so special. For me though, I believe the most telling sign of a best friend is when they are honest with you. They tell you when, you're ups when they're upset, they tell you when they're happy, they tell you when they're disappointed, they'll even tell you if your outfit looks bad. And the best ones expect you to do the same in return. The best thing about the best of friends is not that you, they're nice or that y'all agree on everything all the time, it's the fact that they will tell you hard truths. I'm fortunate to have many friends through church, school, and family, yet I'm especially blessed to have a few friends who I would consider my best friends. One of these best friends holds this place in my life because she is also a Christian. 
The relationship I have with her is unique from my other friends. I know that we can, and we have, talked about things that I would have never talked about with my other friends. Due to our, sh due to our shared faith, I believe that we have a layer of friendship that's just not there with my other friends. She is honest with me, and I'm honest with her. We have tons of fun together, yet what I'm truly grateful for, what makes that relationship stand out, and what is most influential to me, is the fact that we have kind of an unspoken perspective that unites us further. The passage from 1 Thessalonians that Emmy read for us clarifies what an authentic friendship should have. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances. That is the will of God and Jesus Christ for you. Do not quench the spirit. And while these are God's directions for us as followers of Christ, it also makes sense to think of these verses as sort of a checklist for the people in our lives. If someone in your life rejoices, prays, gives thanks, and does so because they truly believe in that value, they are the kind of people that you want in your life. The Bible teaches this because of the alignment of your faith and theirs could help create a bond that adds to the deepest layer of any friendship. Those who love and worship God are people that we can learn from and learn with. As I was preparing for our time together today, I read a commentary by N.T. Wright in which he says, most of us learn a kind of mother tongue of behavior. We watch how our families and close friends behave, and we assume this is how one should behave. Who we surround ourselves with matters. When we have strong role models who show us what it means to be knowledgeable, understanding, loving Christians, we can better model that in our own lives. Of course, it is unreasonable to say that everyone in our lives must be the same faith, but it's important to make sure that those who we regard highly and those who we place the most emphasis on mirroring are people who are leading us on the right path, whoever they may be. Of course, in application, changing our own habits is extremely hard, and adjusting the people we choose to surround ourselves with can be quite challenging. Yet, being honest with ourselves about the true implications of our actions is possibly the most difficult. Thankfully, we can find peace in knowing that one of God's core promises is that he is always with us. God is steadfast, and he should be our ultimate role model of who we strive to be more like and who we strive to please. As he guides us and we follow him, we can change our more negative habits that lead to separation and replace them with habits that strengthen our relationship with God. God's truthful message is found throughout the Bible. God wants a relationship with us, and it is up to us to meet him halfway and accept his invitation into our lives. God gave us his son so that we might know and understand how deeply God wants a relationship with us. Jesus' sacrifice makes us not only friends, but family, brothers and sisters, with other believers in him. This meaningful connection is unlike any other and can lead to the best and most fulfilling relationships. In reference to the Thessalonians passage, Wright continues by saying, as you practice what the Bible teaches, the rules will suddenly, as we say, become second nature. That is the aim of learning the new language of Christian behavior. I urge y'all to identify people in your lives or areas of your life that may need some adjusting. God moves in, around, and through our lives, but only if we make room for him. Paul tells us not to quench the spirit. Don't let hurtful, unhealthy habits take up space in your life. Don't, don't give toxic, dishonest people the power to influence your life. Instead, may we always make room for God to move more abundantly through our lives, through positive relationships and role models that embody and resemble Jesus. This church and my church family have helped raise me. Just as I have spent most of my life learning how to be a good student in school, I've spent most of my life in this church learning how to be a Christian in my community. There are many people here today who I would consider my personal role models. These people have not only shaped me into the person I am today, but have grown and strengthened my relationship with God. I've come to see their value as I have grown up and face the new chapter of my life called college. Of course, I will always be mindful of who I allow into my life, but I feel very equipped thanks to the love and support of those here in this room. 
I implore everyone here today to genuinely think about who you spend time with in areas that might need some changing. I'm certainly not asking you to cut ties or completely end relationships. Just acknowledge that there are people in our lives who deserve our esteem and deeper connections and those who simply don't. May we all go into our lives knowing at the end of the day, the most important relationship out there is with God. And we should be doing everything we can to accept and live out his invitation to us. The invitation is to show the mercy and love of Christ to others, as Kaylee said, as well as to allow for God to work in every part of our lives. Our relationships are powerful and important. We cannot control everything, but we can control how we reflect God's love and power to others and how we allow those in our lives to reflect onto us. Let us pray. Father God, our perfect parent, you have called us as your children to be more than friends. According to your word, we have moved from servants to friends to family, a family that encompasses the whole world. We pray for our world, that all countries have peace and prosperity. We pray for people who are suffering physically, mentally, and spiritually, for those in need of food or other resources, those starting off a new semester in new classes and starting a new year or season of their life, for those dealing with hard times and unsafe spaces, we ask you give them safety and help them find community that will support and be there for them. Help us to love one another in all places. Help us to be those who choose to live out the fruit of the Spirit. Love, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, and self-control. And choose to repay those who wrong us with these traits. Help us to bear this fruit and remind others that this is the fruit that will last. As well, let us be those who encourage each other in all ways and in all places as we enter into a new year and another year as your children. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Let us now affirm our faith together with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell, on the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of the saints, and the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. We invite you at this time, if you've not already, to uh, take this. Uh, it's a fellowship pad. They're usually located on the inside of the pews and uh, filled out. We'd love to know you're here. If you'd like more information about our church, we'd love to uh, get some contact information. If you have a prayer request, we would love for the opportunity to pray with you about that. Um, as we move forward in our service, this is the time uh, where we take up our offering. The offering is a unique thing for us. Um, so we're, we're called as believers to serve God in all that we do. Um, today, I, I usually don't say this, but I'm going to today. I'm fine with it. Let's talk if we need to afterwards. We need money to support programs like this. We need money to influence two dozen youth 
that will make sure that Christ stays centrified in their life as they move forward into college, right, Scott? We need money. We need money to feed them. Once you get teenagers in your house, it's a lot of money. We feed like two dozen at a time. It just takes money to have programs like that. So I'm not asking you to give in a way that you don't feel called. I just want us to own the fact that we get to do awesome ministries like this because you give of your time, you give of your talents, you give of your resources, and you also give financially. That's why we can have this impact. Thank you for being a church who cares. Uh, we kind of depend on you to continue to be that church. Now let's continue to worship. Hear us, Lord, as we pray the way your Son taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil.
Thanks again for supporting us today. The passages we looked at today remind us that through Christ, we get to move from servants to friends to family. And that how we influence others and how others influence us matters. Today, if you want to know more about any one of these relationships, be that with Jesus or about being a part of this church, please come and speak to one of our elders or staff. Now, may we go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, and encourage one another and build up each other. As we rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and give thanks in all circumstance, this is the will of God and Jesus Christ for you. Thank you. Become part of a community that seeks to glorify God, to make disciples of Jesus Christ, and meet human needs. Join us at First Presbyterian Sundays at 8.30 and 10.55, or watch us on My 11 every Sunday morning at 9. We welcome you. Come and see.